Hey guys, welcome to my channel Learn with Hina. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please do subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get all the notification about my new videos. You can also follow me on an academy. Just click on the follow button so that you will be receiving all my new courses. If at all you want to get the notification about the lessons which I am uploading in the courses which are already be launched already been launched on an academy then just enroll in that course so that you will be notified about the lessons whichever i am uploading on it so just click on the enroll button you will be getting it upsides like this enroll just click on it so that you will be notified about all the new videos which are been uploaded by me so it is free of course so do enroll it so today we are going to discuss from question number 17 to question number oh sorry to question number 24 okay if at all you are having any doubt from question number 1 to 16 just let me know in the comment section so that i can solve your query now question number 17 who propounded the principles of unity of command now this is the basic question if at all you know the principles of management properly you can make this question out and provided you know who has given the principle of management now the options are option a f w a taylor option b elton mayo option c peter f drucker and option number d henry fiol so unity of command was given by henry fiol now these are the 14 principle it is important so just make a note of it if at all you are not having this uh, i will be providing you the pdf for the same uh, it's not getting rough okay let it be okay now we have 14 principles given by henry fiol the first one is division of work then we have authority and responsibility this all 14 principles are been explained by me in detail uh, on youtube only just find it on the business management course which has been uploaded on youtube just find it i have explained it in detail next is discipline unity of command unity of direction interest that is the uh, subordinate individual interest should not be more it should be like organizational interest should be first then the individual interest should come next remuneration centralization scalar chain order equity stability of tenure initiative and e-spirit decops so these are the 14 principles of management which are given by henry fiol next we will see question number 18 which element is not necessary in each objectives under MBO? Now, what they are saying is that there are many elements that are not necessary in the MBO approach. Now, MBO stands for Management by Objectives, and this was given by Peter F. Drucker. So, if you don't know, then please make a note of it peter f drucker has given this principle in his book practice of management so please make a note of it now option a is time element option b cost element option c human relation element and option number d measurable element so there are four main elements under mbo approach now let's see so here the answer will be cost element as it is not necessary under MBO approach. So we have time element. We also take care of human relation element and also the measurable element. Now some of the elements are first one is the goal specific specificity. Firstly specific goals are set which when achieved should bring forward the result that support organizational operational tactical strategic objectives and plan so first one is the goal specificity next come the participative decision making 
goals when set by the participant of subordinate allows them to achieve the goal that are difficult however the goal set must be accepted by the subordinate as it impacts the impacts the positivity from motivation to performance of the employees so whichever goals uh, the subordinates have to achieve firstly they have to accept this and accordingly they have to work for it next is the explicit performance period time period must be set so as to ensure everything work out within the specified time period explicit time period also allows employees to carry out actions in a proper planned manner so as to meet the deadline so it should be properly planned and in proper uh, the time duration it should be achieved next is the performance feedback periodic performance feedback helps employees evaluate where they are on the target or off target so that they can retain or adjust their behavior so this relate to human behavior their performance is generally affected in accordance to the quality of feedback provided so we have seen that nothing is been told about the cost element so this is not included so ultimately we have a answer as cost element because we take care of time element human relation also we take care and measurable also we measure our goals whether they are been achieving or no not next we see question number 19 techniques of managerial control are useful in so now techniques of which managerial control are useful in what firstly selection of plant location identifying appropriate technology for profit planning or for conducting shareholders meeting now techniques for managerial control are used for proper for profit planning so c is the correct answer now we have managerial techniques uh, in two broad things first one is the traditional one and another one is the modern one now traditional techniques include the uh, traditional techniques are those techniques which have been used by the companies for a long time now this includes personal observation statistical reports break even analysis and even budgetary control but when i talk about modern techniques modern techniques of controlling are those which are of recent origin and are comparatively new in the management literature these techniques provide a refreshingly new thinking on the ways in which various aspect of the organization can be controlled now return on investment means whatever you are investing you get some return so this return can be your profit next you have ratio analysis responsibility accounting management auditing audit and port and cpm so these are the modern techniques of managerial control next question number 20 the function of attracting acquiring retaining and developing human resources in an organization is called now firstly if at all you are only saying that attracting the employees then it will be recruitment but what they are saying they are acquiring them they are retaining them in the organization and even developing the human resources now this particular thing will be done either in recruitment induction training and development or staffing now recruitment is what just attracting a pool of candidates induction is what uh, employee orientation matlab employee ko agar koi newly use appoint kiya hai to use organization ke bare mein batana ki aise hamare organization mein kaam hota hai is tarike se sab cheeze follow ki jati hai ye process hai aur apne employees jo bhi uske colleagues hai unke sath mein introduce karwa dena to wo to aapka ho jata hai induction when i talk about training and development so it is about attracting acquiring retaining and developing human resources okay training is given to employees and when i talk about development so development take place of uh, executive managers now staffing means what staffing means putting the right person at the right place and at the right job so i hope this is clear so we have answer option number 3 or c next question number 21 in term of black button now 
Sometimes you have seen in the questions, previous year questions or even in the practice question, who has given the managerial grade approach. So these questions have been seen in the papers and even the practice sets also. So the answer for this is the Blake and Walton has given this concept or this approach. So just remember this approach managerial grade was given by Blake and Walton. Now what they are saying a production oriented leader will be one who adopts. So now what they are saying कि production oriented leader जो है वो इनमें से कौन सा होगा? Now one is to one style, nine is to one style, nine is to nine style और five is to five style. Now a production oriented leader will be nine is to nine style. So he will be uh, more focusing on what even on his production and even on his uh, concern or he will be having concern for his people. It is team management. So these are the bifurcation of um, we have the five uh, managerial grid. The first one comes the improvised management that is one is to one that is uh, one concern for production and one concern for people. Next uh, we have one is to nine that is country club management one for production and nine for people. Next we have 9 is to 1 that is 9 for production and 1 for people and next we have 9 is to 9 that is uh, equal for both and the middle we have 5 is to 5. So this is the bifurcation of managerial grade approach. Next question number 22 sequence the following in which they are practiced. Now uh, this is the sequence of the staffing process if I talk about now you all know the first process is recruitment after recruitment we have selection now we don't have here in the option selection but option number third is the first one so here if we see then option number third is given in all the first it means we have to see the next option after recruitment what we have so you have to see accordingly and then you have to answer uh, sorry so uh, accordingly you have to see and then you have to answer now after recruitment we have selection after selecting a person whether you will directly promote him or you will directly see his performance that how well he is performing in the organization after selection you will give him some training some set of training to him uh, to gain some skills or some knowledge about some things then here we directly go with option number 4 we have 4 over here so here this all options are been cancelled so we are left out only with option number D now after training and development we have performance appraisal and after performance appraisal we will promote the employee so this is the proper step of process of staffing function first we will see manpower planning that whether we uh, require any employee for our organization then we will recruit them after that we will select from them then we will place them in the organization or we will induce them then we will provide them training development then we will have promotion then transfer appraisal and remuneration so this is the process i hope this is clear to all of you if at all you are having any doubt, you can ask me. So here the promotion will come afterwards. After uh, seeing the performance appraisal, I will give you another diagram also. You can refer to it. But in this particular diagram, we see that training and development comes first. So this is the answer for this particular question. Now, next question number 23. Which one of the following purpose is not served by performance evaluation? So what is not served by performance evaluation? The first one is decision about promotion, transfer and terminations. Option B, centralization and decentralization of decision making authority. Option C, identification of training and development needs. And option number D, criteria against which selection and development programs are validated. So if you see properly, so this centralization and decentralization we do not take this under performance evaluation though we will take 
promotions transfer under consideration even training and development we will see and even selection and development programs will be seen but centralization and decentralization do you really think that it matters no it doesn't matters uh, so here the answer will be option number b that is centralization and decentralization of decision making authority so what is performance evaluation it is the process by which a manager or consultant examines and evaluate an employee's work behavior by comparing it with the present standards documents the result of the comparison and uses the result to provide feedback to the employees to show where improvements are needed and why so cause and how it should improve now the last question who has introduced the seven point plan for taking the best interview manner so the seven point plan for taking best interview was introduced by option a milton l bloom option b f e bird option c professor a rodger option number d filippo now this was given by this is you have to remember the seven point plan was given or was introduced by professor alec rodger in the year 1952 from the national institute of industry 